Hello, this is Joe from MTG Nerd in Korea. We are looking at our budget in Shin Commanders, continuing our look at the EDH rec budget. Our t again, top budget commanders to so $2 or less. Wheel Commanders, so the wheel theme, which is an interesting one. Uh, wheel theme, wheel decks are all about focusing on or forcing players to draw excessive amounts of cards. So you're going to force everyone at the table, usually including yourself, to just draw a whole bunch of cards. Which is a, a bit of a risky strategy, frankly, because, you know, if they, uh, if you're giving them a bunch of cards they want, that might be an advantage. So you can win through non-combat damage or getting your opponents to draw their entire library. So again, if you get people, again, combine this with like mill as well mill and draw that this gets very very scary so yeah this strategy is named after wheel of fortune again this card right here is called the wheel of fortune they have to discard their entire hand and draw cards that's basically what you're doing here is that you're trying to get them to draw so many cards at the end of their turn they're going to have to discard almost all of them right there's no way they're going to be able to like actually play all the cards they're drawing so yeah that's what kind of limits it from being like a truly terrible strategy, but yeah. Just hit like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot and uh, lets me know <clears throat> um, that they, these are worth pulling and stuff. Okay, so in the 99, we have Psychosis Crawler. This is a, yeah, an artifact creature for five colorless. It is star star okay so its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand so this is all about like getting a whole bunch get your card draw and again something to have no maximum hand size there's actually numerous effects that can do that and then what you do is you just have this monster of a creature uh, whenever you draw a card each opponent loses one life once again each opponent is going to lose a life when you draw a card so even in Commander, you draw 40 cards, you win the game. It, not a super hard thing to do, frankly. Um, or, uh, yeah, I guess it's not even just the card draw. Other people are going to do damage too, but let's assume nothing else happens. You draw 40 cards and you win the game. Anyway, 39 cents. Whispering Madness, so two, Demir, uh, Blue Black. For a sorcery, each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards discarded this way. So this is like a very classic wheel effect, and uh, this is going to affect you as well, remember? It also has Cypher, so this means you can basically cast it, and it's called encoding. It's kind of like putting an enchantment on a creature, and every time the creature does combat damage to a player, you, you're going to cast this again. And again and again so yeah really cypher is what I want to do in my keywords it's really good 114 and fate unraveler okay we've got three in a black whenever an opponent draws a card it deals one damage to that player so this is about a lot of them are about making your card draw hurt them or hurt your opponents and this just like straight up like says okay if they draw they take damage so a lot of these decks are going to be more focused maybe more on getting other people to draw or getting you to draw so either way you're covered between these anyway 94 cents number five we've got quiza auger of Higanese. she's in 4,000 and 74 decks. She is an Asper commander. So one white, blue, black. Four CMC for a three, four. Ah, okay. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent gains one or loses one life, and you gain one life. So she's again. All of these are kind of a combination of like wheel and another theme. And this is all about life gain, right? Or I guess maybe a parasite effect. But anyway. Um, I really like the combination here. It is 
Remember, is every time, yeah. Whenever you draw a card, you are dealing one damage to one person, or one player, I should say, and you gain one life. So there's two things really to work off of there, right? You can work off of that, like, damage, that auto damage, or you can work off the life gain. And see, yeah, there's actually a lot of flexibility in decks to build there. Anyway, 21 cents. Okay, so we're looking, at, this one is three black black, uh, sorry, white white black black for a 5-5 five, five with death touch. This is an elemental, and whenever it uh, enters or attacks each opponent, loses two life, you gain two life and draw a card. So once again, you're going to gain two life, draw a card, and when you draw that card, you choose an opponent, they lose one life, and you gain another life. This is, really, you want to do it like a life gain build off of this, right? With a, um, sorry, but, 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 I'm really all frazzled still. My background is this fabric stuff. I took off my wall and I rolled it up and I put it on my bed. And then I decided to, I needed to like do more recording today. So I unrolled it and started putting it up. And while I was putting it up, I was holding one piece and all of a sudden on one on my hand, I felt something like kind of prickly. So I look at my hand and there's a spider like this big. I don't know if you've ever seen sp how big spiders get in South Korea. Especially by the end of summer, this is like this was like a monster. Like, yeah. So it's gave start gave me quite a fright. Anyway, I'm I'm still recovering from that. If I seem a little like out of it, that's why. Anyway, okay, 15 cents for that one. High casting cost, but the synergy is amazing. You probably want some kind of evasion or something with that as well. But okay, marauding blight priest. For two in a black, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Again, you're the kind of only real limitation here is that that damage loss life gain thing that only uh, affects one opponent, right? You're doing one damage to one opponent, gaining one life. Now, when you gain that one life, all your opponents take one damage as well. So the one you chose is going to take two damage, and all the rest are going to take one. Not too shabby. I also like that it doesn't require like any tapping or attacking. It's just a static ability. It's just there. And we 32 cents. Next up, Wizard Class. Okay, for a blue, uh, I have, this is just an amazing one. But you have no maximum hand size. With these decks, that's something you should always be looking for. I didn't probably should have added more effects with no ma maximum hand size, but it's something that you kind of put in the 99. It doesn't necessarily relate directly to the strategy, but here, uh, for, remember, for two and a blue, you can level up the class. You can only do that as a sorcery, keep in mind. So when this class becomes level two, draw two cards. So you're going to draw two cards, dealing two extra damage, and yeah, gaining two life. And if you have the Blight Priest, dealing two more damage. So yeah, really start stacking up already. And for another, uh, I feel like I can't read now. Four and a blue to level three. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So you're going to turn your card draw into damage and then into like more and more bigger, bigger creatures. So you could do a plus one, plus one synergy theme, which is one of my go-to themes anyway. 177. Number four. Okay. Zerus, Writhing Storm. I thought this was not covering, my camera was not covering that. Uh, can I move it over a bit? It, it's not letting me, okay. <sighs> okay, whatever. So this is two teamer, right? Green, blue, red, a flying three, five. Whenever an opponent draws a card, except for the first one they draw on each of their draw steps, create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token. <sighs> Whoa. So this is going to, like, pretty much any commander deck is going to have a whole bunch of extra card draw, and you're going to get snakes every time from that. And whenever this uh, deals damage, uh, combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. 
So you're going to be forcing other people to draw cards by attacking. The really great thing about that is that a lot of people are going to say, yeah, I want the card draw, so maybe I just let that through. Even though it's commander damage, I'm going to like take those cards. I need some cards, and so that way that's all... You know that's good it's something where you could actually like you can get commander damage in and maybe even politic it a bit like uh, you know you're going to get snakes as well but hey maybe they leave you alone if you uh give them commander damage <laughs> anyway it's an interesting one again these are all kind of like combinations of different themes i feel like i as i i wrote on the last one I think the uh, wheel theme is kind of not really a standalone one. Like, if you built a whole deck just around wheel, it'd be kind of boring, I think. So a lot of times they have something like life gain on the last one, and then there's the token synergy on this. So yeah, you kind of want a dual theme with wheel, I think. Anyway, 59 cents. Okay, he's also in 6,225 decks. I have this from pre-con ages ago now i must have been i think it was the second year of pre-cons they released but anyway yeah i can't remember what uh commander oh right it's with the uh i can't remember what the commander's called anymore but anyway it was a good one okay so impact tremors this is a very obvious choice i think but a really solid one for especially for this one in a red whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield this enchantment does one damage to each opponent just doing a whole bunch of damage every time every time they draw an extra card you're going to make a snake and that snake is going to make it so this deals extra damage they're you're turning their own card draw into like damage for uh, it's yeah to each opponent right so if your opponents draw a total of 40 cards uh, uh, sorry extra 40 cards 40 beyond the first card they draw on their turn that's pretty much it you're uh, you're probably gonna win that's a really crazy effect especially get you know your damage boosting thing your, you know, your red does an extra damage, and then all of a sudden the math switches to if you even get plus one damage, they only have to draw 20 cards on top of their uh, their first card, uh, and your commander is going to force them to draw cards. Speaking of forcing them to draw cards, Nin the Pain Artist for a uh, is it a blue and a red? So X blue red. Nin the Pain Artist deals X damage to target creature. That creature's controller then draws X cards. So you're just gonna like basically use removal. This is removal for a creature of theirs. And then you're gonna like force them to draw cards, which makes a bunch of snakes for you, which is gonna like do a bunch of damage and a whole bunch of other things. So yeah. 50 cents only. I love Nin. I wish I wish there were more good uh, decks for her. Enga and Esika. Esika? Eskia? God. Two and a uh, Simic. Green, blue. Creatures you control have tap add one man of any color and use this only to cast a creature spell. Oh, that's some value. Especially you would just keep drawing cards, right? So you can keep throwing down your creature spells so if they just like not really a care in the world. Whenever you cast a creature spell. Hmm. If three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it, draw a card. This is going to give you extra card draw for using your card draw. <sighs> one dollar only. I have one of these. I should get another one. Number three. This Bumbleflower. Okay. So she is our bant here. So one green, white, blue. And, um... Uh, a 1-5 with Vigilance? Okay. Whenever you cast a spell, target opponent draws a card. Hey, great. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Remember, the creature does not have to be one of that opponent's creatures. It can be one of your creatures, okay? 
It gains flying until end of turn. So you're getting a plus one, plus one, I put in plus one, plus one counter on, and giving it flying until end of turn. Just extra evasion. You know, why not? Um, if this is the second uh, time that ability has resolved this turn, draw two cards. So every time you cast two spells, you're giving two creatures plus one, plus one counters, making them both flying, and you can uh, also draw two cards then. Oh. Uh, casting s things that allow you to cast spells during other people's turns is what I look for, right? That, that, being able to cast two spells during someone else's turn is much easier the more, like, card types you can use. So things that give you flash and stuff like that are definitely a win with her. Uh, she's also more of a group hub commander. So this is, I think, the weirdest combination. Wheel, group hub. Um, maybe that goes together really well, actually, now that I say it out loud. Anyway, 109, and she's in 2,511 decks. Okay, so we've got, um, Rian, a Corrupted me Memory. So it's for two green, blue, Simic. For a 2-2, two, two, as long as her power is even, you may cast non-creature spells as though they had flash. Non-creature, great. As long as her power is odd, you may cast uh, creature spells as though they had um, flash. This is amazing with your commander because you can keep deciding... Oh, sorry. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Rayan. Or, sorry, Kyan. Kyan. I thought it was Ryan. Anyway. Um, I don't know why, but anyway. Okay, um, remember... Every time you cast a spell, plus one, plus one on this, also your commander lets you put a plus one, plus one. So if you want to keep this even with your commander, very easy to do. If you're going to go odd and keep it odd, very easy to do. Just skip, you know, putting a plus one, plus one on this with your commander one time, and then do it every time after that. And there you go. You're controlling what this does when. Insanely good with this commander. 45 cents only. Salvala, Explorer Return. So one green white. And it has parlay. So you can tap each player reveals the top uh, card of their library. For each non land uh, card revealed this way, add a green and you gain one life that each player draws a card. So you're forcing that card draw and giving yourself card draw and giving yourself extra mana to keep using those spells you're drawing. Um, just synergy so so much synergy all right 20 cents finally chasm skulker this is one you could probably put in front of any of these decks that have blue so uh or decks in general i should really get this i just remembered two and a blue so whenever you draw a card put a plus one plus one counter on it automatically just keeps getting bigger the more card draw you have oh when it dies, create X11 uh, one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. So this is going to keep just you're going to keep drawing cards. This is going to get huge, and when there's a board wipe or something, great, this is gone, and it just makes a whole bunch of squids one one squids that all have Island Walk. So if they have an island, remember, that's any island. If they have a triome that says island, that's an island. You can just attack them without being blocked. The squids just need any kind of, like, if there's enough of them or if they have any kind of buff. Or you, like, you got a plus one, plus one for all your blue creatures or something like that. There you go. Just win the game. 87 cents. Number two. Nekosar the Mind Razor. Okay, so we've got uh, this is two and Grixis. All right, blue, black, red. For a two, four. Mm, five mana for two, four, not great, but he's in 16,642 decks. That is huge. That's a huge number. This is a kind of an older card now. I think that's why. This is a card I have had in my. I've got like a box with pretty much my, all my wizard decks. I started out with a wizard deck and I always wanted to like put it back together or put another. I was thinking three wizard decks. One of them, he's the commander. Um, 
I've been doing that for like literally over five years now, so I don't know if I'm ever actually going to get it done, but whatever. All right, so at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Yeah, sure. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Necrosar deals one damage to this player. This is, I think, the most like directly um, obvious effect for a mill, or sorry, a mill. Um, for a wheel, for a wheel, this is like probably the most true wheel uh, commander on the wheel list. So yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. 108 against over 16,000 decks. Crazy. Alright, so we've got Nid Mizzet, Haran, 3 blue, 3 red. We actually had him show up on our last list, our Spell Slinger list last week. So this spell can't be countered. Always a great start. Oh, sorry, he's a 5 5 flyer. For 6 mana, eh, it's okay. Whenever you draw a card, Nid Mizzet, Haran deals 1 damage to any target any target Oof. whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell you draw a card remember you're a player right so if you cast an instant or sorcery even something that's one mana you draw a card and then you do one damage to anything so that gets out of control very fast it's really nice with this commander as well because the commander will do damage to you know a player if they draw a card and now if you draw a card can deal one damage to the player or anything else. Really fun combination, anyway. 125, and we've got Psychorax. Psychorax? Commander. Two black red. Okay, so we've got Rakdos. He's a first strike haste for two. So I do like first strike. First strike is especially with something like a four two. Might as well, yeah, have first strike. But anyway, so when it enters the battlefield, um, each opponent uh, faces a villainous choice. That opponent discards all the cards in their hand, then draws that many minus one, or it deals damage to them equal to the number of cards in their hand. Remember, if they draw cards, they're going to draw. They're going to take damage for drawing. And if they don't draw cards, they basically take damage equal to the number of cards they have in their hand presently. So they take one less damage for the wheel effect? Hard to say what they do, yeah? Especially if you can flicker this. It's a really nice combo though. Anyway, 25 cents only. Finally, cast Dissident Mage. This is very much a like Spellslinger commander as well. So yeah, <clears throat> I guess that's kind of like the hidden thing with Grixis is that it's going to be, it's a spell slinger um, <clears throat> wheel commander. So yeah, that's maybe where the the other half of it, as it still is, I think the most wheel based commander. But Grixis is like just really good at doing that as well. So yeah, it's Demir plus Red, which likes some discard too. So anyway, eighty six cents. Again, she gives, just gives you the extra value of, you know, your sorcery or instance in the graveyard, you can use it anyway. So any kind of mill or discard or anything you need to do, not as big a deal for you as it is for everyone else. Number one. Okay, Winter Misanthropic Guide. He is only in 1,152 decks. Kind of low compared to other ones on this list, but it's because he's a very new one. Okay, so he's from Duskmorn. I actually ordered some of this one. The the special art one is even cheap right now. Okay, so he's the. Th uh, sorry, I should back up. He's one and Jund, so black, red, green. He is a 3 4 with Ward 2. People hate Ward. <clears throat> I gotta have some tea. And yeah, it's late, but I've got my Twinnings Tea, so I'm happy. Twinnings Tea. A cup of love. Not a sponsor, but they should be. Okay. Anyway. Um, 
Delirium. I really love Delirium. It's a mechanic I think I could really get behind. I think it's really interesting. There's a lot of ways you can get things into your graveyard easily. And it's really like, how do you trick things into your graveyard with with Delirium? So Jund is a great, uh, a great combination for that because, you know, Black is all about your graveyard. Red, you can sacrifice things really well. And green is like, yeah, you can get a fair amount of sacrifice out of green as well. But also, if you're going to pull particularly permanence back out of your graveyard, it's good at that. So you, it's not like the end of the line. With black or green, you can really get some secondary value. Anyway, he has 30 cents. Uh, I do, again, I just love, sorry, I should read the delirium thing. As long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, four or more, each opponent's maximum hand size is, is equal to seven minus the number of those card types. So as soon as you have four card types, their maximum hand size is three. If you manage to get five, maximum hand size is two. If you manage to get six, maximum hand size is one. And wait, how many card types are there now? Could you do seven and make their hand size zero? That would be super mean, but it would be possible. So we've got land, uh, creature, instant sorcery, uh, planeswalker, battle. So um, what am I forgetting? Enchantment, right. Sorry, I should start again. Land, instant, uh, sorcery, artifact, enchantment, battle. I didn't say creature, no. I'm just confusing myself. But anyway, yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, you could you could do the seven pretty well. I can't list all of my card types out loud, but hey, yeah, that's just my brain being bad. Anyway, 30 cents for this one. Interesting, interesting one. A hey, drag to the roots. And two black green, and it also has delirium that knocks the two off. So it's going to be uh, just green black. Destroy target non land permanent. Oh boy. Two mana just to remove anything you want, basically, except for land. That's a good deal. 22 cents only. Hey. Spiteful Visions. I've actually featured this before. I think it was in my uh, budget Mardu. My Mardu card draw, I think. Anyway, it's uh, two black red, black red. Again, Rakdos. At the beginning of each player's uh, draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever the player draws a card, Spiteful Visions deals one damage to that player. Basically, yeah, you're going to do the same thing that, like, uh, this is also great for uh, Nekasar. I should have th put this with Nekasar now that I'm saying it out loud. Um, yeah, just doubling that effect is super, super good. Anyway, 66 cents. Good for both of these, I guess. Anyway, uh, Koram the Undertaker is one. And again, Jund, so we got our black, red, green. When he gets plus X plus zero, where X is the greatest power among creatures in all graveyards. Really nice thing, where, you know, if someone else has the big creature, play the removal, get it out, and that turns into even more of, of an advantage for you. People are going to be scared of their own graveyards. Uh, whenever he attacks, each player mills a card. So it does include you, right? You also mill a card, which... Again, with this commander, is an advantage. You want to keep milling. You want to keep your graveyard, you know, well stocked with uh, different card types. During each of your turns, you may play a uh, land and cast a spell from among cards in graveyards that were put there from their libraries this turn. So you can cast spells and play lands from anyone's graveyard as long as it went in this turn combine this with mill right force mill on your turn you just you can now take advantage of like all the cards that went into all graveyards you, you're kind of like just able to do whatever you want at that point anyway 37 cents
The list. Okay. Aquisa Agar of Agnes is 21 cents. Dearest, the Writhing Storm is 69 cents. I feel like I said that pretty before, but okay. This Bumbleflower is 109. This is one I think is going to go way up. Nakusartha Mind Razor is 108. And Winter Misanthropic Guide is 30 cents. Uh, even the special art is super uh, cheap right now. I would think about picking that one up. Anyway, take it easy.